esteemed viewers, I have great respect for your time, but give me a few minutes to take you through studies in business communication. It will interest you to note that communication is an important tool in our lives. Many a time, we take communication for granted, but there are a lot of things, a lot of relevant activities that go on as far as communication is concerned. Setting the ball rolling, let's look at what communication is about. So, the question is, what is communication? Communication is the process of giving information and receiving information for the purpose of enhancing one's life and the lives of others around him or her. That is what communication is about. So, conversation that has to do with the purpose of enhancing one's life and the life of others around him or her is termed as communication. So we cannot underestimate the importance of communication. Be that as it may, communication is bipolar. What do we mean by communication being bipolar? It is bipolar because it involves people. In fact, it involves two people. So, in communication, we have the one who is sending the message, who is called the source, and the one who is at the receiving end of the message, the recipient, or if you like, the destination. So, communication has a source. It has a sender. The one who is sending the message. As I'm speaking, I'm the sender. The one who is listening. The audience are our destination or our interlocutor. So, when you send a message, when you pass an information, it goes somewhere. The second person is termed the destination. Or, if you like, the recipient. In some books, you have it written as interlocutor. So, Kofi is sending a message. Kofi is our source of the message, our sender. Then Ama, who is at the receiving end, is our destination or our recipient, which is also termed as interlocutor. That is what we mean by communication being bipolar. It involves two people or two parties. Now, communication must be effective. Every communication must be effective. What do we mean by communication being effective? It is effective because at the end of the day, in the long run, communication must achieve its desired goals. Communication must achieve its desired goals. What do we mean by communication achieving its goals? So we have what we call intelligibility. Intelligibility. Where intelligibility means understanding. So by communication, we expect that the, the sender, the one who is sending the message across, the one who is passing the information, should ensure that the, the message should be clear so that the one at the receiving end will understand the message, thereby sending the feedback. So when you send someone hi on WhatsApp, the person knows that oh, she, he or she is greeting me. So, hi, how are you? So, you see, communication flows. Communication becomes effective because the sender has a clear message and the recipient has understood the message. Therefore, he replies to the message. That is what we mean by communication being effective. The bottom line is that there should be an understanding in the message that is sent across. In fact, the, the, the recipient or the destination should understand the message thereby sending a feedback. That is what we mean by the effectiveness of communication. And if you care to know, Game of Thrones, that has become so popular in the system. There are a lot of things that go on there, especially that has to do with communication. I remember the, the current one, Game of Thrones, season 8, episode 2, when Jamie Lannister, after being betrayed by uh, his sister, Cersei, Queen Cersei, he came and in the courtroom, Queen Daenerys asked him why he's here and other questions. Jamie Lannister is being tried by Daenerys. 
and Sansa and Co. There, in the midst of them, with all the questions flowing here and there, he told, I mean, uh, Queen Daenerys that her sis his sister, sorry, his sister, um, Cersei, has troops. And out of the great joy, a great joy, say whatever, has gotten 20,000 troops. So even if they defeat the dead, so he used the word we. He said that even if we defeat the dead, she has more than enough to conquer the north. Because he used the word we, Queen Daenerys was surprised. So he asked him, We? Daenerys asked the question, We? Because he wanted to be sure of the fact that he is now part of them, leaving the sister to join their troop. So in an explanation, he said that I, I promise to fight for the north and I intend to keep that promise. He said that I, I intend. So in Jamie's explanation, in order to make everyone around clear, he said that I promise to fight for the living and I intend to keep that promise. So by saying that, it settles the matter. Everyone now understands why Jamie used the word we, even if we defeat the dead, she has more than enough to fight us. So the use of we here was questionable. So Daenerys wanted to be clear. The message must be clear, remember? Because in order for the destination, the recipient to give a feedback, he expects the message to be clear so that he knows what to say in replying to the message. So Jamie Lannister explained himself and that settled the matter. What are we talking about? We are talking about the effectiveness of communication where the parties involved, the message they send to each other should be what? Should be understood. There should be intelligibility. That is what we mean by effectiveness of communication. All right, quickly, let's look at um, some key terms in communication. Some key terms. In communication, there are these key terms that are indispensable. One has to do with ideation. Two has to do with encoding. Now, after encoding the message, we expect to have a medium or if you like, the channel. Now, the first three is for the sender or if you like, the source. The sender has ideation, he has encoding, then the medium through which he sends the message to the recipient. Then the recipient takes over from here. So here becomes decoding. The next thing becomes interpretation. And the last thing has to do with feedback. So the first three has to do with the source, while the last three deals with the recipient or the destination. What do we mean by these key terms? Let's take them one after the other. Now, ideation comes from the word idea. So we are talking about the generation of ideas. Or if you like producing ideas. You cannot just wake up out of your whims and caprices. Then you begin to call a friend, send a message anyhow. You have had a thought. Some ideas came to mind. And these ideas that came to mind are what you are executing. So the point here is that 
before you send a message, before you speak to someone, you've had the thought, you've thought about something. Sarkodi will tell you that sometimes when I sit down to reminisce about the things we do, girl, give me a kiss, now we get more things to do. This is the genesis. Sometimes when I sit down to reminisce, reminisce means to think. When I cogitate, when I contemplate. So you see that the point is in sending a message, one might have had a thought about the message before sending it. Whether the message is for a business purpose or social or whatever purpose, there is a thought in mind before you send the message. So, talking about ideation, we are talking about the generation of ideas. Now, after generating the ideas, the next thing is encoding. Encoding has to do with the production of the message. Now, the ideas came to mind. This time, you are producing the ideas. You are executing the idea. You are encoding the message. After encoding the message, you send it through a channel. Which channel are you using to send the message? Is it verbal? Is it oral? Is it written? So you see that there are many mediums. Or if you like, there are many media, sorry, media through which the message is sent. The channels involved. What medium are you using? Now, the sender ends it here. Then, we go to our, our recipient. What does he do? He decodes the message. Just as you had a thought about the message, in producing the message, the decoding also has to do with what? Trying to understand the message. You just saw a message on WhatsApp, you begin to read. You are doing your best possible to understand the message. So, decoding has to do with understand the message. Just as encoding and ideas do with the generation of ideas, the production, the thinking, when it gets to the destination, he also thinks about the message. Ah, now then I go feel no to do what's happening. Ah, okay. You were meeting or and I mean, to cry I mean, so the content of what you've sent made him think. It caused some thinking here. So, decoding also has to do with what? Trying to understand the message. To decode the message. And by decoding, you interpret. So, many a person, many a student, many a speaker feels that Decoding and interpretation are the same. Hello? They might not be the same, but they are similar. Because in trying to decode a message, in fact, by trying to understand a message, you are doing what? You are interpreting the message. So ask Kofi sent you that message. As um, you, you receive the letter from your boss or your secretary, you begin to ask you read. As you are reading, whether you are scanning the message or you are skimming the message, it's not our business. Because by scanning the message, anytime you are reading, we have two types of reading. In fact, there are two stages in reading. And the first stage has to do with the scanning method. The scanning has to do with you are reading very briskly. In fact, fast to find out what the message is about. Just to have an overview, a gist of the message. Then the next thing has to do with scheming. Where scheming has to do with taking your time, paying close attention to the words used, the paragraphs. What does this mean? What about the next paragraph? Scheming, you slow down, you take even punctuation marks into consideration in order to in, in understand, to fathom the message. So, as you're reading the message, you are decoding. You are trying to understand the message. After understanding the message, you would also create an idea of your own. Oh, okay. No wonder Kofi sent me this message this morning. Oh, that's why the secretary sent that message. Oh, okay. So after decoding, you come to you come to conclude the reason for the message. And that is what you mean by interpretation. The last thing under communication has to do with feedback. You've sent a message to your friend, 
You've called your friend. The friend understood the message. He's sending the feedback. He's replying to your message. So after sending the message, after generating the idea, the sender, and encoding the message by producing the message itself and sending it through a channel, the recipient takes over. He decodes the message by trying to understand what the message is about. I mean, the subject matter or the content of the message. Decoding. Then interpretation. He's realized what exactly you are trying to say. Then, you will now send the feedback to the sender. So, feedback has to do with replying to the message sent by the sender or the source. Looking at all these key terms, then it is relevant for us to know the stages in communication. Because if we have these key terms associated with communication, then it is also relevant that we know the stages in communication. All right, so we'll be looking at that in a GIFIL. Stages in communication. We have two stages in communication, and these are they. Now, the first stage takes this form. In the first stage of communication, we have our sender here, who is also our source of the message. So we can place Kofi there, sorry, Kofi here. Then we have Ama there. So Ama becomes our recipient. Ama becomes our destination. Ama becomes our interlocutor. They are the same. So, Kofi is sending, sorry, a message to Ama. This is our message. Or if you like, our information. And it is passing through a channel. Or if you like, a medium. Kofi is sending a message to Ama. Let's use social media, for example, WhatsApp. Kofi says, hi. Hi, dear. Now, Kofi is sending the message. That is why the arrow goes that way. The arrow goes that way. Hi. And the hi is going to Ama. Ama is going to receive the message. Now, Ama will reply to the message and say, hi, Kofi. How are you? Now, straightforward, we move on to the second stage. Hi is going to Ama. Ama replies to the hi and said, Hello, Kofi. How are you? Now, Ama is asking Kofi a question. Ama will change position with Kofi. And Ama, because he's asking a question this time and it's directed to Kofi, Kofi now becomes our recipient. So Amma, in the second stage, becomes our sender. She becomes our source and Kofi becomes our recipient. Or if you like, our destination. So you see that communication is a two-way affair. It is not always that Kofi plays the function of a sender. It depends on who says what, at what time, via what medium. So Kofi sends the message, hi, to Amma. Kofi is our sender. Amma is going to receive the hi. Now Amma receives the message, decodes the message, interprets it, and sends a feedback, a reply to Kofi. In replying to Kofi, hello, how are you? Now she's also asking Kofi a question. In fact, she's also sending a message to Kofi, and Kofi is going to respond to the message. So what do they say? I'm fine, Emma. You? So you see that they, they interchange positions based on who says what at what time. So Emma becomes our 
our sender here by saying hello how are you is directed to Kofi now Kofi will reply so you see let's say for instance we have a test date for example Of course, we don't have a test stage. It's these two stages that we do have. But because of the interposition, the interchanging of position, we can say that we can have more stages in communication depending on who says what at what time. So we can still go back to stage one, or if you like, call it test stage, and say that now Kofi is replying. So Kofi comes back for his position. That is the sender's position. Then she says that. I'm fine. Close my eyes and you? That's what you normally say on WhatsApp. I'm fine, you? So this you, even though it's one word, it's a question. It's one word. It's a question, you? Then it's directed to Amma. Amma becomes our destination. Then Amma will say, I'm fine. What's up with you? So you see that they interchange positions based on who says what at what time. That is what you mean by stages in communication. Viewers, I'm grateful for your time. In the way